until they get in there, whether it's malignant or not. So remember her in prayer. My sister's doing great. She um, just has to take a pill every day for I don't know how long. But the doctor said that was it. No, you know, that's all she had to do. So she's she's very happy and thanking the Lord. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, pray for Cammy. She was exposed to the COVID. Oh, she and she's was? not she's not feeling the greatest right now, but it could be her sinuses. Yeah. So just she pray that's what it is. Have you been exposed then to her then? I'm sorry? Have you been exposed to because of her? Do I have to answer that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, I guess you would. Yeah. She did go into isolation for 14 days. She was at the house, at our house, with the kids and all before the girl ever called her and told her. So she doesn't go to everybody around her, is supposed to go into isolation. Well, she's told everyone. I'm telling you. I know what you're telling yeah. me, and I'm sitting on my deck and I'm staying right here. Yeah, right next to Robert. I, I, uh, sorry, we sleep in the same bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How much you can do about that? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, my family. Well, hopefully, she won't come down with it. She'll be fine. Right, right. She's going to get tested, but oh, I good. don't. Trust, I don't trust the test. Oh, I do. But... I, I, I don't. Not all of them. How do you know you're getting a good test? Well, they, they're supposed to be pretty accurate. Well, there was a guy that says, on Facebook, of course. No, well, you can't and, believe Facebook. That he went for three of them, and the numbers were all different on all three of them. Well, that doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm very disconnected here. I know, I, I know as, a, as a matter of course, I mean, I, I know they're supposed to be accurate. And so, I mean, any test can be off, I guess, anything they do for anything. But I wouldn't believe it. I mean... They're, they're, they're pretty accurate. So. Well, she's got an appointment to be tested. Okay, well, that's good. That, hopefully, it'll come back negative and she'll be just fine. Right. Unfortunately, this keeps going around. and Around and around. Everybody's going to be exposed to it, at least eventually, I think. Yeah. Yeah, sooner or later. Not well. even in there. No. Okay, so moving forward, anybody else? Okay. Uh, pray for my mom and uh, sister. My sister's. We just got her. My mom back into assisted living. My sister's going crazy because she doesn't get to see mom very much and stuff. And oh, she's talking about pulling her out and taking care of her herself. And she's mm -hmm. my sister has arthritis. I'm saying, no, you can't do that. And so you know, we're going around and around and around. I said, you know, it's not. That's not going to work. But so we'll see. So finally, she agreed to wait a little bit longer before she made that decision. So at least I got that compromise after hours of talking to her. So pray about that situation. I got it. I got it. Okay. If you have unspoken needs, let's raise our hands. And God knows it's in our hearts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you now in Jesus' name. We thank you, O oh God, that in time of need, uh, we know we can come to your throne of grace and every situation that we presented those that have pray, Lord, right now that you would do a great work that you pray, oh God, that you would bring your hand upon them and find help Lord, in, in all these situations. We know that you're a great healer and deliverer. You have passed your you know, mother and his me. sister, dear God. Lord, and it's hard, Lord, dear Lord, for your Lord. loved one to be somewhere where you can't take care of them. Be our answer, oh God. In Jesus' name, oh, we bless you. Your word tonight, you give us you revelation. Can. We give you a Remember, bro, today, you know, Lord, the body. In, I pray. In Thank you, Jesus. Right. Thank Amen. you. Amen. 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 All right. We are still in the book of Ephesians. How many have your Bibles ready to go? I do. And Bob, I do. And Sandy, Bob and Sandy, thank you for joining us, even though you're 
on vacation down at the lake or whatever. So, well, it's not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. <laughs> they miss us. That's, That's it. right. They miss us, they miss us already. <laughs> hey, glad we're connected to the real world. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, this wasn't possible. They're down at the lake, but they're doing the Last year, that wasn't possible. Oh, oh I don't know what like this, uh, this way. Right. Bible study when you're away. Right. Nobody has an excuse now. It doesn't matter where you go. You have to, you know, <laughs> to join us for Bible study. You can't get away. <laughs> get a Wi Fi hotspot, you're good to go. That's right. Does that mean when I go on vacation, I still have, I'm going to do Wednesday night Bible study anyway? That's right. <laughs> you, you can't get out of it now. That's right. He says when he goes on vacation, does he have to do one? <laughs> yeah. you'll, take your, you'll take your laptop with you, right? Hey, I, I forgot to tell you, I have a, I have like a praise report for me. Well, you get a laptop and get on here. You ready to hear it? Yes. I was talking to my son about the Lord's return this week. Quite bluntly, I was talking to him. And he, as he started to turn around to leave the room because he had to go get a shower, he says, Mom, don't give up on me. Oh. Lord, son, I'm never giving up on you. That's right. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. yeah don't give up on me, huh? Mm -hmm. That's sweet. That's, that's good. All right. That yeah. is a good praise report. Yes. Yeah. All right. Jumping into... The book of Ephesians. Since our memory's a little hazy, I'm going to start with chapter 1, verse 1. I made that joke before. That's not funny anymore, right? No. Okay. No, we're in 12. <laughs> it actually wasn't funny the first time. It's still not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's less funny now. It's even less funny now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really funny. We'll be lucky to get <laughs> there. Funny. If you say it again, another time it's going to be less funny still, right? Okay. <laughs> we, we are in actually chapter 3, verse 13. Yeah. Right? But to understand verse 13, we're going to go back to chapter 3, verse 1, just for a second. I want to remind you how he begins this. Where he says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ, Jesus, for you Gentiles. So that's where I starts this chapter. And then we went through the whole chapter, which is just one thought up to this point, right? Up to this verse. Uh, you know, and we, we, we've been sharing that the last couple of weeks. You know, what he shared about the mystery of, of Christ and on and on and so forth. And, and now, you know, we left off last week. Well, now we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him and, and so forth in Jesus Christ and, and brings us to this point. So what 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 is it? What was the reason? For this reason, for this reason he says, and then he goes through all that, brings us to the reason, that he, which is, therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. OK, so he said all the previous to bring to that point. I want to share all this with you, remind you of all this truth. You know, that he is the, the prisoner of Christ Jesus and he wanted to bring attention for this reason that you not what? Lose heart at my relations for you, which is your glory, which is to your glory, to your honor, to your benefit. Right. So you may be discouraged. So the possible, you know, obviously he was dealing with you're discouraged because of all that Paul was going through. But I want to remind you of why that's true. Right. Uh, and then he reminds him of this truth that he shares about Jesus Christ. Mystery is not revealed and so forth and so on. And how we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Jesus Christ, which I also preached. Uh, so it's for this for that reason so i wanted to bring you back to that uh so the tribulation because verse 14 starts another statement the same statement for this reason right 
go back to for this reason. So you see what I mean? Chapter 3, verse 1, for this reason. Now, verse 14, for this reason. Okay, so he's back to that. But for this reason also, right, he's a prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles. That was, that was verse 1 of chapter 3. And I don't want you to be discouraged about my tribulations. And then he goes on now, verse 14, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a famous prayer in the Word of God. And so basically, let me reiterate here. He's saying all this is because that God has called me, Jesus Christ has called me for your sake, right, to minister the gospel and to share it and because i'm ministering the gospel to the gentiles i'm going through all these tribulations but it's worth it because of what he shared with them of revealing that truth about what we have in jesus christ our lord which is which is great which i share with you sunday in the, the message so many people don't uh even among the christian faith want to appreciate what christ has done for it or how how good we have it as far as being able to come into the presence of God, right? Through Jesus Christ and have a personal relationship with God through Christ Jesus. And so what we could say, whatever we have to do, whatever we have to go through for the, for the kingdom work is worth it, right? To share because, because of how extraordinary the message is, the gospel is for those who are lost. And so, yeah, we may have to go through some, difficult times we may have to struggle you know there's going to be resistance from the enemy we can get discouraged and all that but in the end you know it's it's just amazing what god has done for us through jesus and so it's it's worth it so it's just for this reason so this is you know, so this is why i'm a prisoner of christ jesus is for you this is why i don't want you to be discouraged with my tribulations because of all they share with them about Christ Jesus and the grace that they had received through that gospel. And then he goes on now, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here's a, what that's another way of saying, I mean, I'm praying for you obviously, but it's a very poetic way of saying, you know, this, uh, this is my urgent desire for you, right? This is what I desire for you uh, from the depths of my heart and to make them this form of a prayer from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So let me go back to verse 14 for a moment. See, I bow my knees. So we don't always kneel to pray, but that is symbolic of prayer, isn't it? Uh, kneeling to show respect and the fact that you are subservient to someone else. Kneeling before someone has always meant that, right? Uh, about before kings and authorities and powers and so forth and so it is and when we do it it's symbolic we're humbling ourselves before god we have to always kneel to pray we should be praying all the time you know pray without ceasing but it is symbolic of of, of our understanding of that god is above us and worthy of of, of us kneeling before him at times we do that we kneel uh some of us at this stage in life find that a little uncomfortable anybody find it uncomfortable to kneel actually on your knees and so end up uh maybe sitting down instead of, instead of kneeling after a short time or whatever what god cares about of course is that we pray right but it is a symbol of that when he says i bow my knees so so his coming down before God in respect and reverence and seeking the face of God. And he refers to him as the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, which all through this uh, epistle, he refers to God the father that way and in connection with our Lord Jesus Christ. So that indicates our relationship with God through Jesus Christ and through our Lord you know, we're subservient to him, you know, Jesus Christ or Jesus the Christ, the sent one, the anointed one from God. And so it's all in Jesus once again. So then he makes a statement from whom, from 
from the Father, the whole family in heaven and earth is named, right? We all belong to God. We're all in the family of God as far as those who have given their heart to them. So both those in heaven and earth. So you could look at that as all the saints, I suppose, all the ones who have gone on before us, as well as we ourselves. You could also expand it and say, you know, God's in charge of everything, isn't he? He is creator God, and he is the source of all things, so both in heaven and earth. So all that's good and righteous and, and holy is a part of, you know, God's creation. And then all of us, both of us, both those who have gone on to be with the Lord and we who are alive and remain, both those in the under the Old Covenant in the Old Testament and those in the New Testament, under the New Covenant, and, even, and those of us who still remain alive today are all part of the family of God. So all of us are named, all of us are identified with God through Jesus Christ. So the whole family, the entire family, both here on the earth and those in heaven. And that's kind of an unusual statement there. So, so here's his prayer. So this is a, you know, this is a uh, priority prayer as much as he's putting into it, he says, you know, he's bowing his knee and talking about the whole family and having an earth name uh, in the family of God. And so he goes on to say, here's his, here's his request, his desire, his prayer, that he would grant you, that God would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, based on the riches of his glory, and other statements throughout Ephesians talk about the riches of his grace. So through his grace, we receive, you know, all these benefits. And so the riches of the glory of God to be strengthened with might, or you could use the word power, force, through his spirit in the inner man. That's the first thing. So this is a, a priority, right? That we would be strengthened with the power of the Spirit. So that's key. So if that's what he writes to the Ephesians, and he, and he, and he obviously is not just talking about them because in chapter three, verse one, he says to you Gentiles. So that would be more than just them, as far as what this would involve. It still involves us today, right? This is a priority prayer. Because we need to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, right? We need to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And that's that's a, a vital importance. It makes sense, doesn't it? To, to live for God, we need the power of God's Spirit. So we're born of the Spirit. We're anointed of the Spirit. We are baptized in the Spirit. And that power is what we need to deal with living for the Lord, battling against the uh, the enemy, you know, taking the gospel to those who need it throughout the world. We see here, I think, the essential necessity of the Holy Spirit working in our lives to, to bring us uh, power, to strengthen us. <coughs> Spirit. Anybody have a comment or a question at this point? So then we can highlight those of us, you know, and, and some still don't you know, believe in this, but those of us who still believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we can see how vital that is, right? Because that has to do with power. Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8 and 9, you know, talked about you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, right? Uh, and so you know, that's essential. You, you will be witnesses to me, he says, and I, even to all parts of the of the earth, and so it was good. And, and he told his disciples that before they would go out and begin to minister, that they should go and wait in the upper room and wait for the promise of the Father. Because that's how. <laughs> Anybody know what that noise is? Going by my house. Something in your house? Yeah. Okay. 
concerned of, isn't it? So, that so then I think we can conclude that it's important for each of us to pray for one another that we would be strengthened with might or power through the spirit in the inner man, right? For each other. Pray for one another. Lord, strengthen my brother, strengthen my sister through the power of the Holy Spirit because they need that. They need that to serve you. They need that to minister to others also. And pastor, we, it's something that's needed daily. Uh, yeah. We pray, pray that for one another and for oneself because it's it's that energizing of the Holy Spirit to be with us throughout the day. We don't know what we're going to face, uh, who's coming across our path. And right. we, need that, we need that energizing spirit. So we are, and we know the scriptures Tell us that we are to walk in the spirit, we are to live in the spirit, we are to be full of the spirit. Absolutely. We need yeah. that energizing power mm -hmm. to do that work. Yeah, be filled with the spirit. Exactly. Leave that to the chapter then, of our study here. All right, so my we have a come to. Anybody yeah. else? All right, but the thought doesn't stop there, as so often is the case with the Apostle Paul. You know, he goes on at length with the same thought, and you know, adding more and more, more things to the thought. And so that's not always praying about, right? That's the first thing, is that we would be strengthened with might through His Spirit and inner man, and then. As a result of that, and in addition to that, also you could say that Christ may, mostly you could say as a result of, of that initially, of that happening, it makes it possible for this to happen, which is that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, right? That Christ would dwell or live within you in fullness. Now, it doesn't use the, that phrase in fullness, but that's what it that's what it indicates. That's the idea here, that Christ Jesus would dwell or live in our hearts fully through faith, through faith in him. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, let's break that down. So established in love right so something is rooted and something is established that way also you all remember the song i know i shall not be moved right i shall not be i shall not be moved i shall not be i shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water i shall not be moved but it's rooted down right into the soil so something rooted so that's something that's stable and i'm hoping the trees around the parsonage are stable i know the one in the front yard is not because it's dead we're gonna have to have it removed soon but the rest of them around i guess are and that's good because if storm comes through you don't want it falling on the house so um so some of those are and then that one in the front not so much it still has roots but they're dead so so something rooted is something established in the ground and then he uses the word grounded also, rooted and grounded. Again, the idea of being established in love, in the love of God. Because love is essential, isn't it? Love is what God's all about. God is love, 1 John chapter 4. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So you can wrap it you know, all up. The relationship between God and man is God is love, and God has loved us so much. So to be to be in Christ Jesus means to be established in love, rooted and grounded or established, not subject to be in and out, up and down, easily blown off course out of the way 
And of course, we know that love is the very first, the very first aspect of the fruit of the spirit that we talked about previously in Galatians chapter five. So we're talking about the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, strengthening us, then then we're being established also in the fruit of the Spirit to a greater degree as well as the power of the Spirit. And a part of that, of course, is love. And so this is essential. You know, this is this is part of his prayer, that Christ would dwell in our heart, fully dwell in us through faith, that we would be rooted and grounded in love. And then verse 18, may be able, may be able to comprehend with all the saints, what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. So that's the aspiration, right? That's the that's the goal, that's the priority that he says not only they them personally, but also with you know everyone. This is is the goal to come to a deeper and fuller, more complete more total understanding, comprehension of all the things, all the dimensions of God's love. And so, so he puts this way, he uses uh, descriptions of dimension, width and length and depth and height. So the, the, to fully be able to understand it and experience it which we can only begin to do now in part and we won't really totally have that ability and understanding until we get to heaven right Brenda, did you ask something you were going to say uh, yeah it, it can slip my mind about as quick as, <laughs> as it comes no, I hope it didn't. <laughs> but as you were saying he, he is praying that we'll get a revelation of it. You know, we can know about things. How many things do we know about, but we just can't grasp it? But it's it's he's praying that we'll get a revelation of the of the love of God, of how great it is. And um, God is love. His nature is love. His attribute is love. He's the source of love. His yes. love is totally different. And of course, we don't understand that till we come to him. But but I believe Paul's praying here, and we know that we can't understand it just by fully. We can understand some by reading it, by studying it. I, yeah. You get a lot, but Holy Spirit will teach us. That's but it's true. also experientially as we walk with him that we come to know his love. I can remember, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time, but many years ago I was studying on his attributes and I was studying on the goodness of God and a situation happened and it was the enemy speaking. Well, God's not good. You know, this is happening. But I had studied on it that week and I immediately was able to take up the sword of the spirit, my weapon, and use it and speak to him. No, I know that's not true because I, <laughs> I know that God is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but I've been studying on this for a while, and it, it is so much, so much that we can uh, we can uh, uh, glean from this. We can we can dig it out of this uh, yes. about the love of God. Uh, his love is tender. It's tough. It's sacrificial. Uh, it's relentless because he pursues us. He he uh, he uh, 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 woos us to come to him. He draws us to him. And I have been praying more and more to know that love of God, to understand it. And, yeah. uh, if we don't, if we don't fully understand the love of God, we really will not have that good of a relationship with Him that He desires for us to have. Yeah. So I'll shut up. I'll be quiet. Oh, no, I'm glad you shared. I I get tired of hearing myself <laughs> on and on, and it's even worse when I review the recording a little bit, you know, because being posted now on the website and so i kind of review it a little bit and i'm like oh man i gotta hear this again no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I learn something the second time around what did you say bud yeah <laughs> i said you might learn something the second time around yeah <laughs> <laughs> notice something is there something for me to notice 
<clears throat> what should I notice? Hey, is this point? You know, you might need to emphasize a different point or something. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes uh, if you review something, you, you, you get more out of it, yeah. Okay. Are you going to elaborate anymore? Is that it? That's it. He's okay. done. <laughs> okay. Short and sweet. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Let's continue then. So verse 19 to know or to fully know, completely know. I, I, I was going to go back to what and uh, what Brenda said, which was so good. And, uh, just add to that to part of our earnest revelation can come through research or whatever and study and all that but to really know the love of god you have to experience it and that's what she said also so yeah you know it's an experiential thing to where what he's talking about and that's true in general of the word of God. There are people who have studied God's word who are not Christians, who know the facts, but they haven't experienced it. And that's a whole different thing, isn't it? It's also true of people who haven't studied that much. If you tell somebody about your experience and other people, they, you know, they get some inkling of it by you sharing your testimony, but it's not until you come to the Lord yourself and you experience it for yourself that you have a better understanding of what it means to be saved. And so it is with the love of, of, of Christ. So as believers, we should continue to grow in the Lord. We should, we should strive to experience more fully his love or and experience more of what that, what that means. Because we, we, we have the love of God. We already know that. And we've experienced it in salvation. But to come to a better understanding of all that, it's like any, any relationship. Uh, what, what can happen, what's designed yeah. to happen, when people are married, for example, over the years, you get to know each other better. And uh. you're going to have a greater appreciation for the love you have for each other. And you experience it to greater fullness because of that revelation. You get closer together. You become more in tune. Sometimes you become more alike. It's amazing how you become like that other person in a lot of ways. You can do a, adapt to them and take on some of their their tastes and their characteristics and things. So it's uh, it's quite quite something. I mean, that's the way it's designed to work anyway. Of course, other people, not so much. Some people don't get closer together. They, they get farther apart, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. But that's, and that's also true not only in marriage, but, but friends, if you know friends for over a period of years, you get to know them better and begin to experience more fully uh, that relationship. If you have a oh. pastor for 14 going on 15 years, you get to know your pastor better, your pastor gets to know you better, right? How many know me better now than you did when I first came in 2005? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 15 years. It will oh, be. Oh, my. December. Yeah, 14, going on 15, December. Wow. Yeah, that's a long time, isn't it? So we are growing more like Christ every day, more in his image from day to day. But, you we know, should. the amazing, amazing thing is I was reading this and studying this um, this part, I was reminded that uh, in Revelation, when the Lord is speaking to the seven churches, what did he say to the church of Ephesus? You have left your first love. That's oh. right. Call to repent and return. And that can happen. Time for the chime. Yeah. It's a little fast. Yeah, that's good, Brenda. That's right. You've lost, you've left your first love, and that's what 
that's what so easily can happen. Uh, often does happen. That's human nature. Is, uh, over time, you kind of drift, and 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 I'm glad you you mentioned that because it you know kind of goes along with the, what I'm trying to convey, which is uh, to keep it fresh, right? To keep it uh, ongoing, to grow in it, because as as human beings, we may think, well, you know. Some people think, well, just just to be saved, that's well, that's the start and that's the end and that's all there is. But actually, we we grow in our relationship with the Lord. There's so much more to know about. I mean, his his love is extended to us and and we're saved by that. So it's not like he doesn't love us or show his love, but we get we get a better appreciation for it. We experience it to a greater degree as time goes on, and we see his love at work in our lives through all the our the things we have to deal with, all the crises we go through. And just in, like Brenda was saying, sharing every day with the Lord and growing in, in that relationship. So we need to understand, even people as old as we are, have served the Lord as long as we have, there's still a lot to know about him personally, experientially. And so we should strive for that, to keep growing in that. Just like the Word of God, we can read it many, many times, but there's 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 always a fresh revelation when we go back to it, if we if we approach it that way, and so it is with our relationship in the Lord in general. Uh, we should never think, well, you know, I know all there is to know, and this is all there is. No, we can grow, and that's why he uses those dimensions and measurements, you know, to to express it that we can come to total comprehension. Which, as your word comprehend, you know, not only means to have understanding, but it also means to envelop something or so understanding involves enveloping. So, so have a full envelopment of the of the fact that you find and the uh, revelation that you're trying to trying to understand. And so to the comprehend is to come to a full realization then of what the width and the length and the depth and the height, which no one can know what that is. And there really isn't from an end of those measurements, right? How many can agree that it's limitless? God's love is limitless. But that's the way of him expressing to us. What we should strive for is, yeah. is to fully experience God's love to the best of our ability here. And then when we get to heaven, even more so. And then he says in verse 19, to know the love of Christ or to fully know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, which is beyond knowledge. So on the one hand, he's talking about comprehending it. On the other hand, it's, it's actually beyond our ability to comprehend it fully, right? So, because it's impossible, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to know. We can know it more and more and more. And he goes on that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So by knowing the love of Christ fully, we come to a, a state of being full of God or coming to a fullness of God or all that God has for us and what he's purchased for us through Jesus Christ. I, I'm going to ask you to turn back in your Bible for a moment to uh, this word fullness is used previously in Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 23, which is talking about the church, which we are, which says, which is his body, that's what we are, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And we talked about that at that time. So we want to so he is fully in the church, without reservation, without limit. You don't find you don't find Jesus Christ as far as a, a relationship outside of the church. It's all within the church, and we are members of the church. And God has not withheld anything from us, but all that is in Him is within the church and given to the church. And without limitation, Christ is given to us fully. In fact, God so loved the world, as I said before, that he gave his only begotten son. So when Jesus 
came to the earth, he gave his all. He died for us, right? And now that when we accept Christ as our personal Savior and we have a relationship where he's in us and we're in him, he's not going to hold anything back. We can know him. There's not a, we talked about last week, there's not a separation now. There's not a curtain that comes up protecting us keeping us out, not protecting us, but keeping us out of the holiest of all. We can come boldly into the throne of grace. We can we can fully experience Christ Jesus. Nothing is without. There's not a, a wall of separation now where, you know, you can only come so far. And, you know, you've got to be just followers. You can't really No, He has adopted us into his family. We are children of God. Yes. And we yes. are heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus Christ. So nothing's been held back mm -hmm. so that we are fully able to experience what God has for us. So, so here is the prayer that we may be filled with all the fullness of God, all that he has, all the full and complete total that's available through his grace and in relationship with Jesus Christ. And so that begs the question then, what what would be the opposite of that? Well, a lot of people get to know Christ to come and accept the Lord as a Savior, but they don't really go much beyond that. They stop there. And when we stop there, we deny ourselves what God has for us. Because it uh, it's not automatic. I mean, he, he doesn't hold anything back. He, when he saves us, we are saved. But then on our part, there's some work involved, isn't there? There's this process. We have to want to know him better, like any relationship. I know that you know that. Those of you that, and you've all been married at some point, and you know how that is, that that relationship, for example, you have to work at that. You have to work at that. You get to know each other. You know, it's not, you, can, you don't just drift along. You have to make an effort. Both parties have to make an effort to work things out to develop the relationship. That's true between friends. That's true between parents and their children. That's just true in any relationship. It's certainly true with God. We have to work at that and desire that. We don't and, need we don't and So we can come to that fullness. Okay, uh, questions or comments? Anyone? Anybody feel the love of God? <laughs> we feel the love of God. Are we exper Are we experiencing it? The love of God, yes. 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 It's so overwhelming. Now, first twenty twenty one is going to take some. Uh, analysis and some breaking it down which we'll begin next week we'll just read it right now and i can i can assure you and hope you know this to be true we'll come back to it next week and get into it uh, more deeply but you're familiar with this this is a really important passage now to him to god of course who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us so we're back to the power of the holy spirit that we we're talking about to him be glory in the church by christ jesus to all generations forever and ever oh man right mm -hmm. so that's god we'll come back and break it down but basically it just said you know god can do god is limitless in what he's able to do mm -hmm. at the end of the chapter God is able to do what, you know, is limitless in what he is able to do. And he works in us. He works through his people. He works through his children. He works through the, what now is called the church. We are the church. And we have the power of God within us through the Holy Spirit, which is, brings us back to why he leads off the prayer that we began tonight with praying that we would be strengthened in the inner man by the by the power of the Holy Spirit, because that is so essential. 
And so I leave you with that thought. We'll get back to it next week. Anybody have a closing comment or question before we uh, wrap it up tonight? Everybody still with us? Are we awake? Yeah, yeah. we're awake. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us tonight. Very much appreciated. Your uh, thank you faithfulness, and I'll see uh, two of you in the morning. I guess at ten o'clock. Oh. Practice. <laughs> We're working on a new song, so we need we need to you know we need to add to our oh, repertoire. So it's gonna take a while, I think. But we'll eventually be able to uh, present another song, hopefully within the next month. See how that goes. So good night to all of you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. To, uh, good night. Sign out. Good night. Your red Signing phone. off. Signing out. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> good night. Good night. Hey, Dan. What? Wasn't um, remind me, I have some pictures to give to you that I made copies of old pictures, old family pictures. I think Robert just hung up on me. Everybody's gone but me and you. Yeah. Yeah. Robert cut, cut off in the middle of my conversation. Right in the middle of it. Yeah. Can you imagine that. <laughs> I don't understand that. Do you? I don't either. I don't either. No, I'm not. Uh, oh, well. All right. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh,